What comes to mind when you think about the Netherlands? Most people would think about the canals, the bikes, the cheese, colorful tulip fields, a landscape full of windmills and a Rembrandt painting. There's a famous saying that goes something like, God created earth, but the Dutch created the Netherlands. We literally raised earth from water. We needed to change our environment to suit society's needs and have a long and respected history of doing so. We also have continued to employ massive changes to our environment, altering the landscape in drastic ways. Ecologists say that almost every natural environment found in the Netherlands has been designed by people. What you probably did not think about when envisioning the NL is peatlands, which cover about 9% of the country's surface. Peatlands have always played an important role in Dutch landscape design and environmental engineering. And although it's not what you would typically think of when envisioning the Netherlands, it has deep roots in Dutch society, economy, and culture. The Dutch engineering tradition will be useful as our country is at high risk to the impacts of anthropogenic climate change, particularly floodings from increased heavy rainfall and sea level rise. Peatlands can be a tool in the tool belt of the Dutch strategy towards mitigating and adapting to climate change, as well as adhering to our national and international environmental agreements. So what exactly is peat? Think of a brownie and then imagine some grass on top of it. That's basically what peat looks like. Peat is made from mostly organic matter, like leaves and branches, which have been accumulating for thousands of years. Our signature flat land and high rain frequency resulted in the ground remaining waterlogged, which prevented organic matter from decomposing, aiding the formation of peatlands. The waterlogged organic matter keeps carbon in the ground and away from the atmosphere. But when an area with peat is drained for human activity, all the carbon that was stored in that ground gets released into the atmosphere. The drainage process reduces landscaping cooling effects and enhances climate change by releasing CO2 and instigating fires which can burn for days. The draining, burning and harvesting of peatlands has many impacts altogether, accounting for almost 5.6 of all anthropogenic greenhouse gas emissions per year. And the Netherlands is amongst the highest European peatland CO2 emitters. This drainage is mainly driven by agricultural activity and is a popular practice amongst farmers and is even incentivized by the Dutch government through subsidies. Drained peatlands harm the environment and society within it by polluting waters, destroying entire valuable ecosystems and causing land subsidence. The newly re-oxidized top peat layer erodes and compresses, continually lowering land levels. In the Netherlands, Large parts of the country are currently subsiding at the same speed as rising sea levels. Millions of government funds are spent on subsidence driven by peatland draining. Yet, when peatlands remain underwater, they are the most effective long-term carbon store and sink among all terrestrial ecosystems on the planet. They are biologically rich areas and serve as feeding grounds for birds, insects and other important flora and fauna. When protected, Peatlands host life, act as barriers to rising sea levels and flooding, issues with which the Netherlands is at ever increasing risk due to climate change. This capacity to act as a barrier is due to the sponginess of peatlands, allowing them to absorb heavy rains. Peat mosses are even able to absorb 20 times their weight in water. Now, let's take a step back to the past and ask, how did we even get here? Historically, the Netherlands was a very inhospitable and challenging landscape to develop a society. Because of the waterlogged nature of the country, it was difficult to build houses, keep your feet dry and grow food due to the saturated soils. But the citizens adapted and innovated and used this difficult terrain to their advantage. We took to boats, made room for rivers and drained the lands using innovative techniques. From this adaption, the Netherlands developed into an incredibly prosperous country. Peat and its landscapes are represented in different forms throughout the Netherlands, in arts and even street names. However, it is a largely forgotten and mysterious entity nowadays. The peat landscape is large in Groningen and Drenthe and is linked to a long history of peat extraction in the area. If your ancestors came from Groningen or Drenthe, it was very likely they were linked to the peat industry. The peat industry dates back as long as the 15th century. It reached its peak during the period of industrialization. Peat even fueled the golden age of the Netherlands and formed the main energy source for steam-based machines driving industrialization. 
which eventually led to current day climate change. Rich citizens from large cities founded peat companies, hiring peat diggers for the hard work. Working in a bog, you would be either standing in cold water up to your hips or standing in a wobbly boat bending over to dig up to the heavy peat for 16 hours a day. The dredging technique began in the 1740s, and the harvested peat would then be transported by boats pulled manually. When walking through Amsterdam today, boats that were involved in the transport of peat can be seen next to the Scheepvaartmuseum. These peat diggers were only paid in vouchers that they could use at the local stores which was owned by the farmers, enriching them further. After protests, starting in 1888, national laws were writing to tackle these so-called truck wages, which are still in use today in our labor laws. Peat has been used historically in a plethora of ways in the Netherlands. It was used to warm houses for domestic consumption. It was even used to embalm people. Peat was believed to have medical properties, and peat therapy was a common practice. Patients would be covered from their feet to their necks so that they could absorb the medicinal qualities. Peat was even employed in war strategies. An English and Dutch army used a peat barge as a Trojan horse to enter the city of Breda and capture it in 1590. In World War II, the Dutch also flooded the polders to halt the Nazis, and peat fuel aided the post-World War II recovery period. Peat acted as the backup fuel source when coal or wood was in short supply. Peat was always there for people, to keep them warm, power industry, and keep the economy running. This commercial harvesting of peat is not sustainable as the yearly growth of peat is just a millimeter per year, and its draining has several harmful consequences. Wetting dry peatland areas can be used to capture carbon as a form of nature-based climate mitigation and adaption. Because peatlands prevent plant matter from decomposing, they are the largest and most effective terrestrial carbon store. They take up only 3% of the Earth's land mass and store more than double the carbon of all the world's forest combined, even though forests take up 10 times as much land mass. When peatlands are protected, they can also help communities become more resilient to climate change because they act as an incredibly absorbent barrier to heavy rainfall and rising sea levels. The importance of peat in tackling climate change has also been recognized on a global level. The Global Peatlands Initiative has been launched by the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change COP22 in 2016, aiming to raise awareness about the importance of peat in the global carbon cycle and its role in mitigating climate change. The Netherlands has ratified the Kyoto Protocol, which is a legally binding treaty that commits industrialized countries and economies to limit and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. The treaty has also recognized peatlands and organic soils as an accountable factor and potential target for mitigation action. The Netherlands has also ratified the Paris Climate Agreement in 2017, also a legally binding treaty to reduce CO2 emissions. On a national level, the Netherlands has to fulfill specific obligations. Since May 2021, the binding EU target for a net domestic reduction of at least 55% in greenhouse gas emissions by 2030 has been agreed on. Considering this, the Netherlands not only has a moral obligation to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions, but also a legal one. So what initiatives have been taken for the Netherlands to achieve these goals? Taking into account peatlands' huge potential, the Dutch Frisian Federation for Environmental Protection has taken the initiative Valuta voor Veen, or Paying for Peat, in order to collaborate with farmers to increase groundwater levels of peat meadows and reduce CO2 emissions. Emission reductions are calculated and form carbon certificates. These certificates can be traded in the market, which contributes to compensating the farmers and landowners financially for reduced agricultural productivity due to the higher groundwater levels. Taking farmers into account with peat initiative is very important. They need to be consulted and respected as they are important stakeholders whose livelihoods depend on the lands they work on. Another important initiative has been the Care Peat Project from the EU, which also works together with regional NGOs in the Netherlands such as Natuurmonumente, which do work with local landowners and farmers to restore peatlands. Other initiatives give hope for the future and increase awareness to promote action such as the organization Repeat. They annually organize a peat fest, which this year will be on the 29th of May, for people from around the world to gather to exchange ideas, co-create knowledge and learn from each other. Despite the international treaties and national obligations from the Netherlands, there is much that needs to be done to ensure peatlands are protected. Access to information, changes in agricultural policies and a change in mindset to working with nature instead of against it there is no available information on the rates of peatland drainage in the Netherlands, and it is difficult to resolve an issue when there isn't enough data. 
nor enough public awareness and involvement. Many Dutch citizens are unaware of the importance of this landscape, and this needs to change. So, as we see, peat is important not only for mitigating and adapting to climate change, but as well as for reconciling Dutch culture and history. Because the Netherlands already has a relationship of altering nature and adapting to the dangers and struggles of an inhospitable environment, we are already adaptive as a culture. We can use this history to adapt our practices and policies to mitigate and adapt to climate change. But instead of fighting nature to gain ground with no thought for the consequences, we should be working with nature to gain ground in the struggle to halt and reverse climate change. So now, when you think about the Netherlands, you can think about the canals, the fragrant tulip fields, the nice cheese, the landscape full of windmills, the Rembrandt painting, but also the peatlands and its importance for nature, the country and its people.